Hello there guys, what is going on? Son of Chelsea back here again for another video. Going to be answering your questions once again on the channel. Thank you to those who kindly submitted on my community page and also on my Twitter at Son of Chelsea. We've done uh, two Q&As in, in the space of I think three days. I uploaded my recent one on Saturday. Please go and watch that if you haven't already. Also, please go and watch my rational perspective on the win over Aston Villa on Sunday. That's already been uploaded to the channel if you have not seen it already. We've got some good questions. I mean, they are kind of dominant. Uh, the, the name of Reese James it is quite dominant, as you'd probably expect in this Q&A, and how Chelsea, grand part of the club, uh, are going to deal with it in the coming weeks. Uh, but, but of course, it's a massive subject to, to tackle. It really is. Before another busy week for Chelsea, where we've got two games... Brentford on Wednesday going to have my team selector out for that tomorrow and then of course my review on Wednesday and then of course looking ahead to the weekend against Man United at home where we're hoping to beat Man U for the first time in the Premier League I think since 2017 so it's been too long it really has we have to beat them eventually and hopefully that can be the case next weekend uh, but let's get into your questions uh, firstly here from RJ who asks do you think the latest injury setbacks to N'Golo Kante and Rhys James significantly change Chelsea's plans in terms of how they approach January we have to see how our new ownership and the recruitment structure which is kind of being built currently got new people coming in how they view the January window I am always cautious about that period because there is always a lot of fan pressure it to sign players there just always is no matter what's happening no matter if we've had some bad business in January and and it's very short term think back to last January following Ben Chilwell's injury um people were calling for a left wing back they just were for all that month and I remember on deadline day when we didn't do anything people were very angry at the club for not doing so and I think they've been proven right for not doing so. Obviously, that was a previous ownership. And then we had the madness of the takeover. But I think at the time, and I criticised Chelsea's transfer business a lot and their strategy, I think they have been right in recent transfer windows to not act seriously. Uh, because there's no point if you're just going to buy someone who isn't going to radically improve what we have, isn't going to be here for the long term. We've made that mistake far too many times. It's not like there aren't solutions in January. I think that... Matic is probably the best example and I do think this window I'm a little bit more open because if we were to go it back in for someone like Edson Alvarez or maybe there is a wing back option out there who would fit what we do on the right side but I, I am always cautious I am in, in that area and I I don't think it will radically change at least I hope it doesn't change what the club were already thinking ahead of the window but we will see how that I think it does also matter how long is N'Golo going to be out for? And also, how long is Reese going to be out for? If he's back for the second half of the season and he's ready, maybe they don't act at all because they feel like we've got enough options to go for the rest of the season. Dominic asks, on a scale of relegation battle to lower top half finish, how badly will Chelsea miss Reese James and how badly will it affect our season? Take a drink every time Reese James' uh, name is, is mentioned in this video. Um, and I don't think you'll survive by the end of it, to be honest. Reese not being available is, is horrible. And... I don't think you can replace him. You can't replace the level of player we have in Reese currently. The excellence, the sort of maturity and the balance between sort of defensive security that he brings us and also creativity at the other end. Just the flow, the natural sort of instincts of Reese, the, the calming nature of him, all those things. He is just at the peak of his powers and it's such a shame that he consist consistently gets these injury setbacks, which is a wider problem in itself if you're thinking about how the squad is going to be built in the coming years if he continues to get these problems and how you counteract them uh, with maybe stronger options to, to rotate in and out like we've seen with Marco Correa. Um, but I don't think it has to be the death knell of the season. I really don't. I, I feel that Chelsea, that we've seen a lot of positivity in recent weeks. We've seen players stepping up creatively because that's, I think, what most people think about when, they, when they're dreading seeing Reese out the team it's not only that defensive security but it is how he impacts us in the final third which has been a problem area but we see Pierre Pierre Emerick Aubameyang seems to be settling well at Chelsea Mason Mount is coming into some brilliant form and you know you see the likes of Conor Gallagher I think has added fresh energy Ruben Loftus-Cheek too defensively I think there's been a lot of players to, to applaud you know Kepa Ariza Balaga looks like he's really growing into this role as number one again Thiago Silva Kaladu Koulibaly Trevor Chalabar Ben Chilwell, Mark Correa had a bad performance yesterday, but he, he's a quality player. I There is enough in this squad to still get results or at least still put out good performances. I don't feel like it has to be the end of the world. And, you know, I'd like to see the squad not kind of fall into that trap and for us not all into, to buy into this theory that, oh, it's just dreadful now, so let's just sulk for the rest of the season. And hopefully, 
Reese's injury isn't that long, so he will be back by the new year at least, and that will be positive for us. Chelsea FC season asks, what's the ideal patch over idea with the right wing back, right back issue until Reese is back? So again, another mention of Reese. I, I do feel Aspilicueta is going to be most dominant. That's just my instinct at the moment. I'm not quite sure Raheem Sterling as a right wing back. I don't think it... You're always guilty, I think, in football, we all are, of just looking at one game and saying, that just doesn't work, so just don't do it again. And maybe it could work because, you know, Sterling against Salzburg as a, as a wing back, I think, really did work. And I'm not opposed to trying that for a variety of reasons yesterday. It just did not work. Um, Villa were much better than Chelsea in the first half. I think our passing was was poor in the first half. We couldn't control the game. If we can control the game, maybe it's a different story. Uh, Villa, I think, were very good at kind of pressuring Chelsea and really isolating our back three. And it's going to be the case for, for Potter, of, particularly when you don't have Reese, the quality of him. How do you stop that happening on, on a regular basis? So I don't want to sort of write off that experiment just based on one game. I think it'd be foolish of me to do so. But at the same time, I still feel like with what Aspilicueta contributed against Wolves, I think we may see a bit more of that. Um, and I do think that linking him with Gallagher is quite important. I, I just feel that Gallagher and Dave on that right side against Wolves yeah sure it's Wolves um we're really good at sort of pushing Wolves back because Gallagher just offers this raw energy that is just he he makes himself a nuisance and you just can't let him run about because he's obviously got quality on the ball as well as we know um so I feel that having those pair that that pair together there right? it was interesting watching Klopp against uh, City uh, yesterday, how he used Joe Gomez and Harvey Elliott uh, to really stifle the left side of City's attack. So it's not just a case of one player solves everything. It could be the case of two or three players because Chelsea are going to be coming up against some really good attackers, in-form attackers, Marcus Rashford and Gabriel Martinelli to name two um, in the coming weeks in some big games. So it may just be co combining players together, profiles that work in a certain situation, getting us through to the time when Reese can return. I'm going to lean in the direction of Aspilicueta, but we could see Sterling... People won't be happy, but we may see Pulisic there because he has played that role before for Thomas Tuchel. Um, and we may see Ruben there, who obviously can play in that role too. Nicole asks, what do you think is the best position for Ruben Loftus-Cheek? And do you think he can still improve or is he already the finished article? I feel like he has evolved his game, um, at least to a point where so far this season, I feel like he's maybe maturing a bit more into that central midfield role where he obviously has more defensive responsibilities um, and he can't just maraud up the pitch. Um, I feel like he's understanding that in that role, you've got to be physically strong, which obviously he has the profile to do. You've got to be mobile, but you've also, I think, got to be smart when to go, when not to go. Um, I feel like he's maybe judging situations a bit better. I feel like a big problem we saw last season when Tuchel play, played him in that role. I feel like Arsenal was a great case um, of him just allowing players to run off his shoulder, which, you know, as a number eight, you can maybe get away with if you're playing a little bit higher up the pitch, which he was earlier in his career. When you're playing in that role, you've really got to try and protect that defence as kind of a double six, which is generally what Potter has gone for so far. I mean, there have been variations where Jorginho has kind of played as the six, but he is playing a bit deeper than he was before. There, there are times where he can maraud forward, and we know Ruben at flight basically when he's charging with the ball is a wonderful sight in football it really is um but maybe there are ways for him to still to improve as he grows i mean he has missed a lot of football in his career i think that's maybe what people forget and maybe that makes him a little bit younger in a sense although that that injury those injury flaws can can really hurt a player in terms of durability and trusting them consistently there may also be a sense that Ruben still has some time to go in his career and I think he's absolutely got the frame he's got probably the the motivation and the character I think really to deal with setbacks and hopefully he can really solidify that role now because Chelsea have needed someone dominant in midfield and I'm not sure if Ruben's going to be that guy but at the time but at the time of recording I think you've got to be impressed with what he has so so I feel that like he has evolved and there probably is more ways for him to go in his career. And finally, Smat asks, who's your favourite Spaniard to play for Chelsea? Um, I'm not just going to mention Diego uh, because he was Brazilian born. So I'm going to slightly cheat and I'm going to uh, bring up Cesc Fabregas. I think it's a tie probably between Cesc Fabregas and Cesc Rasplaqueta, but I just loved watching Cesc play for Chelsea. Um, I just think he was a wonderful, wonderful footballer when we got him. Um, even though he had done some brilliant things in his career before with Arsenal and Barcelona, um, I just think we bought him at such a perfect time and he blended so well. And obviously that does link naturally to Diego Costa. But as a character, 
watching him just glide across the pitch and some of the passes he picked out were were truly unique for him you know there are a few talents you can I think in the years since we've we've clamored for a player like that to pick out passes but he had such a unique ability to do it and it's not something that is general in football I don't think you can find many Cesc Fabregas's out there we were very lucky to have him for the period we did and and he obviously achieved a lot with us um and yeah I just think he's a great character and, and I'm interested to see what he does because I, th- I do think he can become a really good coach I just got I get that sense listening to him now later in his career uh what he can do and maybe we could see a return at Chelsea someday so I'm gonna say Cesc Fabregas I, I just re- I any chance I get to go back and watch games with Cesc at his, at his best in a, in a Chelsea shirt I always take that opportunity because I, I think he, he was such a good player but that is it for today's Q&A thank you guys so much for taking the time to watch it if you did enjoy it hit that subscribe button and a notification bell so you don't miss any of the uploads on the channel follow me on Twitter at Son of Chelsea have a great rest of your day and I will see you again very soon all the best Thank you.